that's sort of where Procore comes into the picture and what it brings to the table. So I'm sure you guys, you guys all know how Procore works, right, since you're selling it. All right, so I don't have to go into that. Um, but the, advantage, the huge advantages of Procore, from my perspective as a pathologist, is that instead of just giving me, you know, grain of salt type pieces of tissue or, you know, individual cells, which is what you get on an aspirate or in a cell block, Procore is going to give me like an actual piece of tissue like a chunk of tissue that I can actually see. And so this is huge for several reasons. First of all, uh, I can see architecture, which means I don't just see like individual cells or small groups of cells. I can see the cells as they are sort of in relation to one another, how they're sort of interacting with each other. And so that's a piece of information that's very helpful in making certain diagnoses. Also, you know, it's a bigger piece of tissue, so obviously I'll have more material to do ancillary studies. Again, immunohistochemistry usually, but also flow cytometry for lymphomas in certain cases as well. So more tissue for these ancillary studies is always something that you know, we're happy about. Also, if it's a difficult lesion that they can't aspirate, Procore is great because you, know, you can biopsy these fibrotic harder lesions with a Procore needle and get decent results. And finally, uh, you know, the, one of the main advantages of doing FNA is that we get that diff quick slide. So we can see in real time, A, are we in the lesion? B, what is the lesion? C, what should we do next? We can make those assessments because we can do a diff quick uh, slide from the aspirate. For Procore, you actually can do something sort of similar to do an immediate assessment. Of course, these Procore biopsies have to go and fix in formalin and get processed the next day. So you're not gonna see them for a day or two uh, once you get them from the patient. But we can get an immediate assessment of what's going on and if we've got adequate material by doing a touch prep. I'm sure you guys have heard people like talking about making touch preps, right? So basically, what we'll do if we get a Procore biopsy, just to make sure that we've got you know, a piece of tumor as opposed to something benign or just some blood, is that we'll gently touch the biopsy onto a slide. And so the Procore biopsy will still be intact. You're not crushing it or anything. You're just gently touching it onto a slide. But if it's got tumor in it, you know, a few cells of that tumor are just going to shed onto the slide. Uh, and so once you've got a few tumor cells onto the slide, you can then actually do a diff quick stain on it. You can air dry it with the hair dryer, you can do your stains on it, and you can look at it under the microscope and get an immediate assessment. So even though you can't see the core until a couple days later, you can do these touch preps, make a diff quick, or do a diff quick stain on them, and you can tell if you've got material, uh, you know, get a vague idea of what the tumor is, and decide what you want to do next. So you can still do an immediate assessment with these Procore. So that, that's really important also, because that's one of the main advantages of FNA, that you can do immediate assessment. But you can do that with a Procore as well, with touch preps. Okay, so here, for example, uh, is all four of the different modalities sort of lined up. So here's our diff quick stain slide. Again, thin layer of cells and mucus and what have you. Here's a PAP slide. It's a little bit different color. Here's our cell block. It's a pretty big chunk but it's really going to be mostly just blood and those plasma proteins that we use to make the clot. Again, there's very little tumor actually in there. And here's a Procore. This is a very good Procore biopsy. And you can see these little lines here. These are solid chunks of tissue. So it's hard to tell, you know, without looking at it under the microscope, but there's way more tumor here than there is here. And like I said, the pieces are bigger, so we can get an idea of architecture. So you can see all of these sort of pink spindly cells. Instead of just having a few, like a chunk maybe this big and maybe individual cells floating around, I now have this big piece. So I can tell, you know, this bundle of cells, they're all sort of going in the same direction or, you know, they're sort of making a little like space here where they're not filling in. And all that is sort of important morphologic detail that you don't generally get on, uh, on cytology or in a cell block. So, the way we process these Procores is similar to the way that we process uh, a cell block. So again, we fix them in formalin, which sort of pickles the cells. They sort of shrivel up a little bit. And then we embed it in paraffin. And then we cut it into thin sections that we can either stain to look at under the microscope or stain for immunohistochemistry to see what proteins it's making. So the cells are still sort of pickled like they are in a cell block. But we have the advantage here now that we can see architecture. We can see the way that they're arranged. So this is definitely superior to a cell block in almost every respect. So what we're looking at here is a thin slice? Yeah, it basically, you, it's like a, just to make again a crude analogy, you Im fix it in formalin, then you embed it in paraffin. So now you have this block that's wax with the tissue inside of it. And then you use almost like a deli slicer just to cut very like four micrometers thin slices of this tissue. 
and you put that little slice on a slide and you can then stain it. That's sort of how that works. So it's not like you're putting the piece of tissue on the slide and then staining it. You're, you're just embedding it in paraffin and then cutting very thin sections. So you can cut, you know, 50, 60 sections off of one slide. So you can, you're not going to make 50 things to look at like this, but I can look at it and say, all right, now I want to look for these 10 different proteins and I'll have plenty of material to do it with. Any questions on that or, okay. So yeah. So really gives you a lot more information from the pathology standpoint. I'll get to that. It's, okay. it's, sort of com it's definitely complementary with FNA. So I don't think it replaces FNA, but it's a different set of information okay. that you get. So, I mean, just to address it now. So for cytology, again, with the pap stain, I get very good basis on, very good detail on like a cell per cell basis. The nuclei are very well preserved and I can assess that really well. Whereas here, the nuclei aren't as well preserved Again, it's, everything is sort of pickled, but I have this now architectural information, which is a different sort of way of looking at it. And also, I can do immunohistochemistry, which is huge. So it's not going to replace it, and it's not better information, but it's more information. So you can combine them. Yeah? How many stains do you need to make? Like, can you get 40 different slices? Oh, no, you don't need 40. It, it really depends on the scenario. Sometimes you'll just want, like, you know, one or two. Sometimes you'll want like five or six. I would say at most you'll generally want five or six. If it's something really weird, you might go to town and get like 10 or 15, what but that's unusual. Like all those, the IHC? It's all IHC. That, that's really what we really want these pro cores for so most of the time. Oh, there's, oh, none or, you know, 20. It really depends on the case. Um, I'll start to talk about that more later, but yeah, bring that up again if I don't address your, your question, because yeah, that's important to understand. But the key is one Procore biopsy, we can do you know, lots of different st stains on it. So it goes a long way, like one or two good cores. And it's information that we wouldn't have otherwise with just FNA. And yeah, again, in addition to being able to do IHC, we now have architecture, which is useful for us as well. OK, and so again, you can still do an immediate assessment. Even though the Procore is not going to be ready for a day or two, you can still, again, touch it gently on a slide and do a diff quick on that slide and get an immediate assessment and I can say, oh look, you know, there's, there's lesional cells here and I think maybe it's this kind of tumor and we can take it from there. So you still have the advantage of immediate assessment with Procore. So just to summarize so far, in the previous paradigm of doing pancreas biopsy, we had FNAs, which we made smears of, and they gave us good morphology. We had diff quick that was good to get an immediate look at the slides and we had a PAP that was good for giving us nuclear detail. Again, very important to diagnosing adenocarcinoma. Uh, then we would use dedicated passes or needle rinses to make cell blocks, which we could then use for ancillary studies. But usually there wasn't very much material in the cell blocks, and the pieces of tissue that you get are really tiny. Again, like grain of sand or piece of salt type pieces. Now with the addition of Procore, we can get much bigger pieces of tissue uh, for either ancillary studies or to get just to look at the architecture, the way the cells are arranged. So you, in a lot of, in most cases, it pretty much replaced cell block for us in terms of, again, getting us pieces of tissue that we could use for ancillary studies and get a look at the arrangement of the cells. Also, this helps us out a lot because if they're having a hard time biopsying something because it's hard and fibrotic, they can use a Procore and usually get pretty good material out of it. So that's so far. Okay, so again, here's our previous paradigm. We would FNA things make smears and stain them, and then we would do more FNA passes and we put them in RPMI and you know, do flow cytometry or cell blocks for IHC. Now with the addition of Procore, this is sort of more what things look like. Uh, we still do our FNAs to make smears with, but in general, if we want to do ancillary studies like flow cytometry or if we want to um, do immunohistochemistry, we just do a Procore instead of making a cell block. It sort of supplanted it in that role. It looks like a lot of times it's FNA, possibly Procore, or, you know, Procore and maybe FNA. But yeah. If, if you can get both with Procore, yeah. technically, why not just standardize and use Procore? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you could do that. I, w I was more like trying to make the distinction between getting like an aspirate and getting the actual like piece of tissue core that you guys I provide. <coughs> yeah. I mean, from an aspirate, from aspirating, in terms of aspirating a lesion, whether they use a Procore needle or whether they use a standard needle, that is all pretty much up to them in terms of like how much material they're getting and making a decision at that point. But for me, the main distinction in my mind is when are we going to get like an actual core, a piece of needle, like a, a core of tissue, which you can't get with a standard needle. 
versus getting a piece, a chunk. Yeah. Um, these are little questions, yeah. but just from your perspective, why do the pathologists, when you're expelling the sample from the needle, do they sometimes freak out? And it might be the difference between the RPMI and a cytolite. Can you not mix saline with cytolite? Oh. Is that like what you're not supposed to do? No, you, I'm not sure because I understand. They, they get really mad sometimes when you spray. They're like, don't spray a lot of saline in there. Like, don't. Oh, okay. I see what they're saying. So yeah, generally when you when you introduce some um, like water into an aspirate, it's not a huge deal in terms of the core or the um, or the uh, cell block because again, you're going to dehydrate everything when you fix it in formalin uh, and pickle everything. So it's not going to make a big difference there. But in terms of the the smears, the pap, and the diff quick, if you put even even saline, any sort of water or saline is going to tend to blow the cells up and it really distorts the morphology and it makes it difficult to look at. So like if I see a lot of that like blow up, blown up artifact, like I'll really back off and I'll be much more hesitant to make a diagnosis because you saw like blown up cells are sort of one of the things you see in cancer and if you put saline in there, it's gonna blow the cells up as well. So okay. I so think it that's make why. A difference in the vials that you're spraying that. It's not as big a difference. Like if you get water or saline in an aspirate, that's, that's going to cause problems, not so much in the Procore. Like if you're actually putting it in formalin or RPMI or whatever. 